there is a moment, so brief it almost escapes notice, when the body makes a final, irreversible decision. One second, control still feels possible. The next, something ancient takes over. Right before ejaculation, time seems to bend. Breathing changes, muscles tense. Awareness narrows to a single point inside the body. It feels sudden. But nothing about this moment is sudden at all. Long before release, the body has been preparing, quietly, precisely, layer by layer. Signals have already crossed the brain. Hormones are already rising. Nerves are already firing in synchrony. And then, just seconds before ejaculation, the body crosses a biological threshold, a point of no return. This is the edge, a place where conscious control gives way to reflex, where the brain stops asking, should we, and switches to now. Most people experience it only as intensity, a tightening, a pressure, a wave about to crest. But inside the body, this moment is one of the most coordinated events in human physiology. Dozens of muscles contract in sequence. Valves close, pathways reroute, chemicals flood the brain, preparing it not just for pleasure, but for shutdown, recovery and reset. So what exactly happens in those final seconds? Why does control vanish so abruptly? And why does the body treat this moment with such finality? To answer that, we have to slow time down and step into the seconds before release. Let's go inside. Ejaculation does not begin in the genitals. It begins in the nervous system. As arousal builds, sensory signals from touch and imagination travel upwards through the spinal cord to the brain. The hypothalamus, an ancient control centre that links hormones, nerves and behaviour, starts to shift states. Seconds before ejaculation, the body enters what scientists call the emission phase. This is the quiet precursor most people never feel directly. Deep inside the pelvis, the vas deferens, the muscular tubes carrying sperm from the testes, begin rhythmic contractions. Sperm is pushed forward and mixed with fluids from the seminal vesicles and prostate, forming semen. At the same time, an internal switch flips. The bladder neck closes tightly. This prevents semen from flowing backward into the bladder, a protective reflex controlled entirely by the autonomic nervous system. This is the first moment of no return. Even if stimulation stops now, the process will continue. Conscious control has already been overridden. In the brain, dopamine is peaking. But something else is rising too sympathetic nervous system activity, the same system involved in fight or flight. Heart rate increases, blood pressure climbs, breathing becomes shallow and rapid. Muscles throughout the body subtly tense, not just in the pelvis, but in the abdomen, thighs, hands, even the jaw. The body is synchronising itself for a single, coordinated event. Subjectively, this is often felt as mounting pressure, a fullness, a heat, a sense that release is imminent. But this is still preparation. The final act has not yet begun. Because the most dramatic changes, the reflexes, the contractions, the neurological shutdown, arrive in the final seconds. In the final seconds before ejaculation, control is no longer voluntary. The body has shifted from sensation to reflex. At this point, a specialised neural circuit in the lower spinal cord, often called the ejaculatory generator, takes command. 
This network coordinates signals without consulting conscious thought. The brain is still aware, but it is no longer in charge. Electrical impulses surge through sympathetic nerves, triggering a precise sequence. The prostate contracts first, pushing semen into the urethra. The seminal vesicles follow, adding fluid rich in fructose to fuel sperm. Pressure inside the urethra rises sharply. This pressure is critical. It activates stretch receptors, sensory nerves that detect tension. Once these receptors fire, they send an urgent signal back to the spinal cord. That signal is the trigger. In response, the body initiates the ejaculatory reflex, a rapid, rhythmic contraction of pelvic floor muscles, including the bulbospongiosus and ischiocavernosus muscles. These contractions occur roughly every 0.8 seconds, forcing semen outward in pulses. Just before this happens, the sensation many describe as inevitable appears. It is not psychological. It is mechanical and neurological. Blood flow to the genitals peaks. The glands becomes maximally sensitive. Even minimal stimulation now produces overwhelming input. Pain and pleasure briefly blur because the brain's sensory filters are being overridden. Meanwhile, higher brain regions, the prefrontal cortex responsible for decision-making and inhibition, show reduced activity. This is why self-control disappears so suddenly. The brain is prioritising completion of the reflex over choice. Simultaneously, neurochemicals begin to shift in anticipation of the end. Dopamine reaches its apex. Endorphins rise, dampening discomfort. The brain is already preparing for the emotional drop that follows. All of this unfolds in seconds, not gradually, not reversibly. The body is no longer asking permission. It is executing a program millions of years old. The climax begins before semen ever leaves the body. In the instant before the first contraction, there is a brief neurological silence, a pause where tension peaks and awareness collapses inward. This is the true edge of ejaculation. Then the reflex fires. Pelvic muscles contract powerfully and rhythmically. The urethra becomes a one-way channel. The bladder remains sealed. Semen is expelled in waves, each pulse accompanied by a surge of sensation mapped across the sensory cortex of the brain. At the same time, the neurochemical environment flips. Dopamine drops abruptly. Oxytocin and endorphins flood the system, producing warmth, release and emotional softening. Almost immediately, prolactin begins to rise, signalling completion. This hormonal shift is why the moment after ejaculation feels so different from the moment before. Desire dissolves, urgency vanishes. The body moves from pursuit to recovery. Seconds earlier, the nervous system was in a heightened sympathetic state, tense, driven, activated. Now, the parasympathetic system takes over. Heart rate slows, muscles relax. Conscious thought returns, often accompanied by clarity or fatigue. This contrast is not accidental. It is the biological punctuation mark at the end of the sexual cycle. Importantly, the body treats this event as final. Once the reflex begins, there is no physiological mechanism to stop it midstream. This ensures successful reproduction, but it also explains why edging feels precarious, why the boundary between control and release is razor thin. In these seconds, the body reveals something profound. Pleasure is not chaos.
it is choreography, a tightly regulated sequence designed to complete its task and then restore balance. And once the climax has passed, the body turns away from intensity, guiding itself back towards stillness. Which leads us to the final question. What does this moment teach us about control, awareness and the rhythms that govern us all? In the seconds before ejaculation, the illusion of control dissolves. Not because the mind is weak, but because the body remembers something older. This moment reveals a quiet truth about human biology. Consciousness is a guest, not the conductor. For most of our lives, we believe we decide. But here, on this narrow edge between tension and release, the body demonstrates its deeper authority. Neural circuits shaped by evolution step forward, ensuring that the cycle completes, balance is restored and the system moves on. There is no drama in this takeover, only precision. The body does not rush. It executes, and in doing so, it teaches us something subtle yet profound. That control is not about stopping reflexes. It is about understanding where choice ends and rhythm begins. The seconds before ejaculation are not just about sex. They mirror other thresholds in life. Moments when preparation is finished. When hesitation is no longer possible when action unfolds whether we are ready or not. Birth, speech, decision, letting go. In each case, there is a point where awareness narrows, time compresses, and the body carries us forward. Seen this way, ejaculation is not indulgence or loss. It is a reminder of biological humility. A reminder that beneath thought and culture and identity, we are still organisms, guided by pulses, reflexes and cycles that know exactly what they are doing. When we understand this, fear fades. So does shame. What remains is respect for the intelligence of the body and for the delicate boundary where choice gives way to nature because sometimes the most honest thing the body can say is not, I choose, but now.